Cislo Spice, digital recipes for dominance. Cislo Spice. Mm. Cislo Spice. What the? Recipes for digital dominance. Hello everybody, we're gonna dive right in. All right, here's what's going on. So we got a little bit of Cisco Spice coming at you. We're gonna do free weekly trainings on everything relating to marketing, digital media, video production, video editing, website design, graphic design, social media design, how to generate more leads, growing a digital brand, brand transformation, brand strategy. These are all gonna be free live trainings that you're gonna get an accessible link to. We're gonna do it every Wednesday at 7 p.m. My goal is to really educate you, give you some spice, throw some heat on it, build it all together so that you have everything you need for free to check out and improve your brand, your marketing efforts on social media right now, especially right now with everything that's required to bring your brand, your business, whatever it may be, into the digital era. So I hope to see you there. Sign up, let's get you on. I look forward to seeing you there. Cislo Spice, recipes for digital dominance. I'll see you there. All right, here we go. Hopefully we should be coming through pretty crystal clear. How's it going guys? We're gonna get started. Cislo Spice, the first one. Wow, I haven't done one of these before, so this should be a good time. I spent a lot of time doing it for other people, but now I'm gonna do it for you. I was thinking about, hey, what would be the way to open this? And I was thinking to myself, I was thinking to myself, man, what could I say to start this thing off of like the pure recipe for dominance? And the only thing I'm gonna say is promote more and that's it, we're done, end of the night, goodbye. I'm just kidding, we're not gonna do that. Anyway, okay, good. So if you're here, thank you so much for taking the time out of your uh, evening, afternoon, whatever time zone you're in. Uh, should anything happen, the camera crash or something, I got extra battery, so we're set there, but we're just gonna have a really intimate conversation about what I do, what we do for people so that I can educate you on how to be more effective in the marketplace, how to promote better. There's a lot of content that we're gonna go over every single week, so hopefully this will grow. Uh, if you don't know who I am, my name is Robert Cislo. I run Cislo Ventures. It's a creative agency out of Miami. I've been doing advertising and media production for like 18 years or so. Worked with some really big guys, some big companies. Uh, right now, we have about 300 clients that we service around the world. Uh, everything from production, marketing, advertising, all that good stuff. And I'm going to share, you know, a lot of the stuff that I've observed over those years, what I saw work what I saw didn't work, and hopefully give you guys some education on what you can do. So I'm going to try to deliver as much value as I can uh, for the next 40 or 45 minutes or so. Uh, the way that this particular one's going to be broken up is that we're going to have a first part where we go through a certain topic, and then we're going to go through the second part of it, which is another topic, and then the last part for about 15 minutes or so, we'll open it up to Q&A. So if you have questions, you can put them in chat. I think I can actually put this on and get um, put this on and, and actually hear people speak. So I do have my headphones ready to go on that. All right. So if you're brand new, do me a quick favor, you know, if, share this on social media, you know, take a screenshot of what you're watching, put it on Twitter, put it on Facebook and do hashtag Cislo Spice. Tell everybody what you're doing, because I don't know many marketers that actually dive into what we're going to talk about today. And hopefully you'll come away with some serious education that you can use immediately, all right? So thank you so much for joining me and uh, we'll dive right in. So if you got your notepad, if you got some pens, take them out because we're gonna start. And hopefully you can hear me good. Thank you, Eric. I appreciate that to everybody that's here. All right, so the really, the, you know, the first thing that we're gonna start with is called, it's called identity and differentiation. And what does this have to do with social media? What does this have to do with getting leads? What does this have to do with building a brand? Okay. And a lot of people struggle with this. Every client we work with really struggles with their so-called digital identity or who they are, or what it is that they're trying to communicate. And, and they reach for weird solutions to solve that problem, which ends up hurting your brand. It ends up hurting your conversions. It just hurts everything in the long run. So this first part, we're really going to jump into that identity and differentiation deal first. And then the second part, we're going to talk about outwitting the competition 
uh, so that you can get more leads, you can grow your audience, all of those things. We're going to dive into that today, right? But let's just look at identity for the first part or identification. So the idea of identification is the idea that you can be readily seen, acknowledged, recognized for a specific style, a specific message, a specific portrayal of a product or service or colors or anything like that, that basically becomes this, well, I don't want to call it an aura, but it's basically you, right? And if you have never done any branding before or any social media, this is going to be really helpful for you because you're going to have an advantage. Now we've helped people, you know, we, we have one of the second largest health insurance companies in the United States right now. Uh, and they struggle with identity. You know, this is a big thing. And so what do people do when they don't have the identity? Well, they look at what other people are doing and they start to copy this, in, this person or this group or whatever is actually being promoted. And, you know, we say that thing like copying. When I say copy, I mean like legitimately trying to mimic the personality, the way that somebody communicates, how they post, the creative ideas, all these things. Now you can copy the mechanics of posting and promotion and, and building sites and funnels and all these things. But what you can't copy is just the identity of what somebody else is doing, like the, you know, the whole Lambo thing and the Jets thing and all this and all that. Most of us don't have those things to start out with. So if you can get the core identity, identification of what you actually are going to present into the marketplace, you already have a competitive advantage because a lot of people struggle with that. They hear people say, hey, you know, go post 100 times a day, you know, go market a hundred times a day, blah, 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 all this stuff. And they just start grasping for it. We don't want you to do that. When we work with people, when I, when I consult people, when we train people, we stay away from copy. Like, well, Rob, this guy's doing this. And Rob, this guy's doing that. And I want to copy this. And I'm like, no, we're not going to do it. It's not going to happen. We can copy the mechanics, but I'm not going to let that happen because you're going to lose the central reason why people want to listen to you in the first place. So you're on here today because you saw the posts that we're doing, the marketing that I'm doing, all that content that we're distributing. You've seen all the other stuff that we're putting out there. And you're like, okay, I want to listen to this guy. You want to listen because it's me, right? So the first thing you have to look at is it's not so much about the product. It's not so much about the service. It's more about the individual that's actually doing it. Now, do you have to be extroverted? Not really. Do you have to be crazy? No. Do you have to do silly things? Do you have to swan dive off of balconies? Do you have to light things on fire? Do you have to strip down into a bikini and show off what you got? No, you don't. If you want to, whatever. But I'm it's ill-advised. I don't advise doing it because it's not sustainable in the long term, especially if you're trying to attract a particular audience. Okay. The other side of the identity piece that's really, really important here is that, you know, you, you hear the saying, you get what you attract, right? Well, if I promote something in a frame of mind, or I am having a negative attitude, or I got a bad day or something like that, chances are I could probably pull in people or leads that would reflect that state that I was in at that moment. And this is pretty intense, like not, not nobody really talks about this, but we see this time and time again. So if you could come at it from this very clear, this very centered I know what I'm going to speak about. I know where I'm going with this. I know what I represent. I may not be the best speaker. I may not know how to crack jokes all the time. I may not have a flashy car or all these other things, but I do know that I have something, which is the ability to communicate and solve problems for people, right? So that identity piece is the primary, primero, numero uno, the first thing that you have to start out with because without it, it doesn't matter. The second part of that, is that when you, when you commit to promoting from that viewpoint of this very centered, this very grounded, I know what I am type of a situation, you'll actually pull in the right people that you want to work with, okay? It's a really interesting thing. Social media, if you, look at, if you look at any influencer today or if you look at anybody that's out there today, just go look at their audience. Look how they act. Look what they say. Look at their attitudes. Look how they are. You know, Maybe you've met some of them in person. I have. And they're a direct reflection of the person that they're following. Like it's a, almost like mirror image copy and mentality. So if you're trying to attract that kind of wealthy mindset, or if you've got a fashion brand and you want to really attract that kind of a deal, you got to put that vibe out. And you can only do that through the viewpoint of identity. That's the only place you could do it. And so how do you discover that identity? Where does that, where does that come from? And, and as we go through the weeks here, 
this will make a lot more sense and you'll see how everything goes together because yes, you could go start posting on social media, but you got to have the theory behind it. Okay. If you want to get the leads, if you want to build a seven figure business and beyond, if you want to know what we've done, what I've done with other companies before, this is what we're doing. Okay. Sometimes it might be fast. Sometimes it might be slow where we get the desired result, but we always start with this piece here. Who is it that's directly in front of me? What is the viewpoint that this person has or you have? How do you perceive things? How do you handle problems? What have you observed in the marketplace or within your business that you're trying to solve? And can you communicate about it? Like, what is your position? Okay. Identity equals position. I'll say it again. Identity equals position. If you don't have a position in the marketplace or you feel like on social media, nobody's paying attention to me, it's because you don't have a position, which means you don't have an identity. And the only way that you can hold a position is to make sure that you identify what it is that you are very clearly for yourself, right? Like what we're doing right now with my company, every six months I do this big training for myself and I basically disconnect from all social media and I just go 100% into Robert's. Okay, okay, cool. Am I being ethical? Am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing? What's up? And when I come back, a whole world opens up for me. And so what did I do? We've created three courses in about two weeks, uh, ranging from creativity, graphic design, video editing, and all of these things, because I realized that I didn't have enough offerings for people. Like we were attracting very large customers, which is great, but how do I help everybody, right? And so I start to look at things a little bit differently. What's my position in the marketplace, okay? Do I want to be just a boutique advertising creative agency? Or could I build a training academy alongside of a creative agency? Like, what am I trying to be, right? I don't really need to be a motivational speaker. I'm not trying to be a motivational speaker. I want people to have the right education on marketing and advertising. That's my total goal here, right? So I look at it and I say, oh, I don't have any products here. I don't have a $29 product. I don't have a $79 product. I got a $3,500 product. I've got a $10,000 product. I got a, a $200,000 product, but where's the 29? Like what's going on? And I'm using that as an example because the position in the marketplace can be radically shifted for myself or for you if you just open up the viewpoint a little bit and identify a little bit more, okay, who am I in relation to everyone else? And that's going to tie really well into the second part of what we're going to discuss here in a little bit, which is about analyzing competition and knowing how to, how to work that to your advantage. Okay. So we've talked about not copying the actual communication and not copying the identity or what somebody's trying to do, but copying the mechanics is okay. Like how somebody does, like how things are physically done. Like I can't escape copying Facebook, you know, posting on that platform or posting on YouTube or certain technicalities that have to happen. You know what I mean? Or using Google search to analyze trends of what's happening and then creating YouTube titles out of that, which you could do, by the way, which we'll get into later on. Okay, but that covers the idea of identity, right? So Eric just asked the question. He said, do you feel your brand identity evolves as the business grows? 110%. Where I was, where you start is not always where you wind up. Where you start, you think you're starting at this one piece, but tying into what I'm talking about here, identity usually comes from the need to solve more problems for the people that you sign up in your business or whatever products that people buy from you, okay? So an example of that would be, you know, if we just start off, my company just started off this video production. That's all I could legally do at the time because I had a non-compete. So legally, I had to only sell video production. Uh, what I really wanted to do was advertising, marketing, and branding. Um, so as, the, as it evolved, I got all that back. And then as it evolved further, I said, oh, well, what else could I add to this? Oh, people need websites. They have, when, when a business comes to me, sometimes they have a web design company and then they have an advertising company and then they have a social media management company and then they have a video production company and they're all trying to work together to work on the brand. Big mistake there, okay? Don't hire seven people to try to do everything at once. Either bring everybody in house to help you do this or work with a central agency like ours that does everything in one spot. It's just gonna save you, it's gonna save you a lot of money, heartache and time. But what we're talking about here is gonna accelerate whoever it is that you decide to work with. So your, your identity evolves. You become something more as a result of continuing to promote, as continuing to listen to conversations that you're having with people on the phone. 
and your brand goes from what this little thing used to be and expands out into larger regions of the marketplace that you can solve. You know, I'm always constantly looking for new things that I could solve because that equals more income for me. And people want that, you know, they'll, they'll see what we're doing. They're interested in what we're doing. Like last week, last week I flew to Nashville, flew to Phoenix, flew back to Nashville, flew back to Miami, and we were shooting a reality show. Okay. We, we signed on this client. He reached out to me because I was posting a trip I was on and he was like, Hey, you guys do documentaries and reality shows. I was like, heck yeah, absolutely. Let's do it. And I have done that. My background is documentary. That's where I started in reality TV. So a brand new product, you know, a six figure product was born out of a vacation, a trip that I took for the first vacation that I took in like seven years. Right. But that's an interesting thing, which is going to get into differentiation now. Okay. So if you get the identity down, where are you? Like, where are you located? Like physically, where are you located? Do you have an office? Do you work from home? Do you work from home? No big deal. Where are you located? You're in a city, you're in the suburbs, you're in Alaska, where are you at? Tell everybody where you're at so that you know, what are you? Are you trying to be a motivational speaker? Are you a business owner? Are you an executive? Are you a salesperson? Are you a real estate agent? What are you? These are the questions you have to ask yourself and get really clear on. What am I? Okay. Am I trying to change the entire paradigm of electrical vehicles? I don't know. It's up to you. But everything that you build from when you identify this will equate to whether your social media, your advertising converts, right? This is so important. So where are you? What are you? What do you know? What is it that you know? People, I, I love it when I go to people and business owners and I'll say to them, hey, come here. Tell me, what do you know? And you'll be surprised. People go blank. They're like, oh, I don't And they freak out because they're like, I don't know. I'm like, wait a minute. How much did your business do in sales last year? Oh, we did about 6 million. Okay. So what do you know? Ugh. I don't know what that is but you'd be surprised how many people don't actually have a list and can rattle it off like that. If I ask you, or if somebody asks you, what do you know? You should be able to riff on that for like a good 20 to 30 minutes without any preparation. Okay. What do you know? Do you know sales? Do you know technology? Do you know web design? Do you know advertising? Do you know photography? Do you know fashion? Do you know beauty? Do you know automotive sales? Do you know mechanic sales? Are you a collision expert? Are you an insurance agent? What are you? And then what are all the things connected to that? Number four, I just kind of started listing, but fine. How do you know it? This is big. This is big. This is an altitude play. Okay. So identity has a lot to do with altitude. Now, what altitude is, is basically an accolade or the right for you to say something that you are. Like I'm allowed to say that I am a expert in marketing, promotion, and branding because I've been doing it for 19 years. And I can show you the thousands of ads that I've produced and the companies that I work with. So how do you know it? You have to be able to back it up. Now, people will say, well, you don't have to justify anything, Rob. No, you don't, but you can back it up with information and knowledge. You can tell people, you can say, hey, look, I know this because I have studied here. I've done this. Here's my entire portfolio. I had, when I first started out, I started in film school and then I dropped out. And, and I started just working on my portfolio and I was working with a guy who was formally trained and he goes to me and he says, how do you know all this? I'm like, I self-taught myself everything. You know, I self-taught myself everything. I picked up the camera, I picked everything up and I started to just use it. That's how social media work too. You pick it up, you start, you start playing with it, you figure it out. I'm trying to fast track for you on that. But the idea is how do you know it is just as critical as identification and a position, okay? How do you know what you know? All right. And how long have you known it? Like I've been doing it for 18 years. Okay. These are all the things you got to have super clear because when you start doing your posts, when you start doing your marketing, when you start doing your distribution, when you start wanting people to actually pay you thousands of dollars, you got to be able to back it up. Okay. And you got to be able to rattle that off inside of your content. That's where it has to come from. All right. So where are you? What are you? What do you know? How do you know it? How long have you know it? And the pulse I'm sorry, how long do you know it, all right? Now, let's go into differentiation a little bit. So differentiation is the ability for you to stand out and separate yourself out from everybody else in the marketplace. Everybody and their grandmother is an advertising expert or social media expert. Everybody thinks that they can do social media or everybody thinks that they can do real estate sales. Everybody thinks that they could do automotive sales. What's the differentiating factor? 
Well, if I don't have a position and if I don't have my identity built out really clearly, there's no way for me to differentiate myself out in the marketplace. And so the way that I have to do that, the way that I have to do that is I have to get a complete pulse on what's happening in the industry. Like the automotive industry right now, huge inventory shortage, huge parts shortage, okay? What are people doing to solve that problem? And what are you, if you're in that industry, are you communicating about that? Are you offering solutions to that? Are there other, are there other alternatives to that that are not spoken about or discussed or broken down or described or anything on that front? What is it? Okay. What are the aspects of the business and the pulse of, I'm sorry, let me back up. What's the aspect of the industry that's not being discussed? You have to have your thumb on that. You have to know what's going on. You have to be aware of it. And then you as an individual have to be able to put your own spin on it. Okay. We're looking for the ability for you to communicate in a way from your own position that separates everybody out. Now, here's the trick. You don't have to do anything more than just show up. Okay. If you've done this first part that I'm talking about, you don't have to do anything more than just show up and speak. Even if it's not great, even if it's not perfect. The first time that I did a live stream back in the days of when Periscope and Meerkat were a thing, I freaked out. I didn't know what I was going to say or how I was going to say it, but I just showed up. And if you guys follow me, you'll know the action of just showing up and communicating is more important than anything else. So if you've got the pulse on what's happening and you have a solution for it, or you're able to just communicate about it, you're already in a better position from the marketing, from the marketing perspective. Okay. You'd be surprised how many people can't just talk about it, you know, or talk about the wrong things. Like this is what I did on Friday night. I went out with my friends in a party, or this is what I did. I, uh, I'm talking about Trump and I'm talking about Biden and I'm talking about this. I'm talking completely irrelevant to your business right now. Completely irrelevant. Engaging in that stuff does nothing but stain the brand forever. You have a product and service. You're outside of all that. Okay, your promotion should never reflect any of that stuff. You don't want to alienate anyone. Your primary purpose as a business owner or someone that's trying to market in the marketplace, market, sell and promote in the marketplace is to solve problems, regardless of whatever viewpoint somebody else has out there. Okay, you have to open yourself up to as many people as you can, because that's how your business is going to grow. Now, something to think about from yourself from your viewpoint, from your marketing, from your solopreneurship, your entrepreneurship, or your company of salespeople, okay? What aspects of your business do you not always look at, talk about, acknowledge, or acknowledge that they exist, okay? What parts do you offer that you don't talk about? See, people think that just because they say we do X, Y, and Z on social media, that that's enough. It's not enough. We have to look at every single nuance that exists out in the market. I'm sorry, that exists in your business and somehow tie that into what I said about the pulse of what's happening, coming from a differentiating standpoint from your own identity, which allows you to claim a position in the marketplace. Okay. If you can't break that down, you're missing out on a dominant play that nobody else is going to do. Your competition isn't going to do it. Nobody else is going to do it. And the guys that actually successfully do it, they win. They win all the time because they're able to look at every avenue in their company and say, or there, if it's just a solo person, what, am it, what, what else could I talk about here? What else am I not exploring out in the world that should be explored a little more effectively? That's not necessarily there, right? And I used, look, when I started, it was just a, when I started my company, it was a survival play. It was like, I just need to sell something. I need to make money. I got to pay rent. I got to take care of my my group. I got to take care of my bills. I don't know what I'm going to eat today, but I got to sort it out. Right. So from that perspective, it was a survival play of like, just promote everything that you can. But now what I've discovered and what I've been doing with other people and how, how I've built, you know, multiple eight figure businesses with other clients is that what aspects of the business are we not looking at? Where could we go? Where could we explore this? And what are we not communicating about? Okay. So you see how identity and differentiation, the four points that we talked about, how all this stuff kind of comes together. Like there's so much more to marketing and social media than I'm going to post a hundred times a day, or I'm going to build me a website. I'm going to build me a great website. It's going to be great. 
I'm going to go throw $20,000 at advertising, or I'm going to go throw $500 at advertising and watch when it doesn't work. And then I'll be completely discouraged. It's these points right here that I'm talking about that nobody really does. Or you hear people tell you to do it. I don't even think anybody really, I don't know anybody that goes into that. But if you can get this part handled, this first part that we're going to go into, we're going to change gears here in a second. I really want to drive it home. Identity allows you to hold position, which allows you to accept customers and convert customers. The differentiation aspect comes from where you are, what you are, what do you know? How do you know it? How long do you know it? And having a pulse on what's happening right now. And then being able to work that into your own marketing and promotion efforts across every social platform. Now, in later weeks, we're going to dive into tactical things where we can actually post what to post, how you should post, how often, blah, 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 all that stuff. But I'm giving you some very important information here that needs to start. You start at this point and then you expand from there. Okay. So that's our identity and differentiation point. All right, good stuff. I hope it's helpful. Hope it's helpful. We'll move into the next part. So this one's about, this is called outwitting the competition. Now, most of us, when you start, you don't have enough money or maybe you don't have enough spend or you don't have the fancy camera gear or you don't have the fancy things to be able to make things look good. So what do you do? Like, how do you do this? Or maybe your company, you're already kicking it and you're, ro you're rolling in the dough, you're doing... You know, 100 million a year, 50 million a year, a million a year, half a million a year, 100,000, whatever, whatever that number is for you, wherever you are. What I'm going to talk about right now is something that I discovered from a deep analysis, uh, comparative analysis across multiple industries. And it's really interesting because without these four points that we're going to dive into for the remainder of this free training right now, I don't think we would have been able to position ourselves the way we have in the marketplace. Okay. So this is outwitting the competition, outwitting the devil, outwitting the competition. Okay. Um, this first one, you probably all, you've heard about it is just speed. Okay. How fast can you get products executed? How fast can you create new content? How fast can you execute an idea? How fast can you adapt to changes? I'll tell you what, we work with a lot of people that get so bogged down in having everything needing to be ready to go the Facebook page, perfect, the website, perfect. I'll tell you what, the majority of people don't even look at that stuff at the beginning. Over time, they will. But when you're just starting or if you're trying to like position yourself and outwit the competition, the only ally you have in that moment is speed. If you don't have money, if you don't have a huge ad budget, it's just speed. It's just how much can I get done and how fast can I do it, right? How fast can I execute a product to market? Because without that, you're kind of just... You're kind of floating in space, waiting and waiting, and you're going through seven board members and you're just like, oh my God, like my, a smaller person can outmaneuver you so much faster, which is what I'm going to talk about next. There's three maneuvers that you need to know about when it comes to marketing and advertising that I've never heard anybody talk about, but I've codified it. I'm going to share it with you, right? So how fast can you place a product? If you have an idea for a product, literally write the idea and promote it immediately. Right. The second it happens, get it out there, put it in the universe, tell everybody about it, whatever you got to do. Just let people know, call your pop, call your mom, hey mom, call your dad, call your friend, call your girlfriend. Okay. Call your best friend, call your realtor, call your tax guy. Hey, you know, anybody that needs this? That's what I do. Call everybody. People get a lot of phone calls from me because it's just like, I got a new product. Uh, you should know about it. You know, anybody, you know, anybody that needs this. And then I take it to social media. I bang, bang. I probably produce anywhere from a hundred probably 80 to 100 pieces of content a day across my social platforms. And when I say social, I mean Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, YouTube. All those combined is just hard hitting nonstop. I'm going to show you how to do that next week. We'll get into tactical stuff. But when I think of something, I just do it. I don't have any hesitation on it. You shouldn't have any hesitation on it. If you could take out that hesitation or the amount of time that it's going to take to produce something, and just put it out there in the first place, your competition is going to look at you and say, what are they on? Like, how are they even able to do that? How is that even like you want people to be like on the edge of their seat because they don't know what you're going to do. You need to be unpredictable in that sense. You need to be unpredictable from the viewpoint of, I don't really know what's going to happen next. Yes. Okay. We want our stuff as close to perfect as possible. Yes. We want to do that. But you also have to understand the more time you add 
even if the product's not ready, look at, look at Apple. Apple pre-sells iPhones before it's ready. And when they give you the iPhone, the iPhone's broken. They have to do an immediate update overnight. They don't care. They already know they're like, you're going to buy it. Why? Because they, what did we do? Oh, wow, Rob, what did we do? Identi identity, position, differentiation. They know what they are. They know what they're going to do in the marketplace. They deliver good products, but the speed to the market is what separates them. Okay. And that's, what's got to separate you. Don't get bogged down in the perfect social media post. Don't get bogged down in the perfect landing page, website, the colors. This has to be here. That has to be there. Get it as close to perfect as you can, that you can live with and get it into the marketplace. Okay. Obviously if it looks janky, you know, if it's falling apart, it's not working. That's obviously what we don't want, but you can get it as close as you need to, to start accepting stuff start accepting business, right? Start pre-registration, start pre-ordering. We, with the Cicelo Spice deal, we started this thing and we got like 70 registrants in like 20, in like 48 hours. I wish all 70 of them were here. Come on back guys, but I appreciate everybody that is. You guys are the rock stars taking time out of your day because you're getting, you know, the knowledge that's being dropped here, people pay a lot of money for and I want to get it out to as many people as possible. And even if you apply 5% of what I'm talking about, it's just going to change the game. So if the product's not ready, get pre-registrants, start building awareness, okay? Start posting, start going, start driving, start pushing. Who cares? Does it matter if the post is perfect? Does it matter if what you're saying is perfect? Does it matter if you stutter? Does it matter if you're shy? None of it matters. None of it matters. By the way, if you're just coming on right now, please take a little screenshot, post it on social media, tell everybody what you're watching, do a little hashtag Cislo Spice. I'm going to look after the after this, and I'm going to give somebody a little, a little present, somebody going to get a little present. So if you just put it out there, yeah, take a screenshot of what we're looking at right now, my smiling face and do hashtag Cislo Spice. Somebody's going to get a little present for me, a little, a little custom design that they can do for free for their social media, right? So how fast can you create new content? I think of an idea and I make a video on it. I talk to a client, I make a video on it. Somebody has a problem, I make a video on it. Somebody says something stupid and I make a video on it. Like somebody makes a claim about marketing that I think is just absolutely like, where, where, where did this person come up with this? Or what kind of, like I look for illogical. I want, I'm looking every day. I'm like, that's illogical. That's dumb. That's bad advice. And I need to go out and correct it, right? So how fast can you create new content alongside of your products to get it into the marketplace, right? Oh, well, I don't really want to go on camera and I don't really want to talk. Fine. You don't have to, you don't really have to, but I will tell you, I will tell you, if you can, you're going to separate yourself out from everybody else. Cause the big boys are like, yeah, well, we're going to look at Apple. Okay. You know, the, you know, the CEO, you know, the designers, you know, the guy, I, I, I'm sorry, I'm using Apple, but it, it's just relevant to what I'm thinking about right now where you know the people that are actually delivering it to you. The face is there. The company is huge, but the face is there. We know who we're talking to. I don't think Johnny Ives works there anymore, but you knew. You're like, dude, this is the guy that designed the, the sleekness of this, right? And you became interested. We're interested in the individual behind the business. We're interested in that person because that's the guy that's making the difference. That's the guy or the gal that we're gonna be doing business with. And I wanna know that person. I wanna know their energy level. I wanna know if they're funny. I wanna know if they're boring. I wanna know those things. I, wanna, I want to know. Just letting you know. How fast can you adapt, okay? Instagram just changed their whole thing yet again. Facebook ads changes every other week. This was here, now it's here. Now you can't do this. GDPR, left and right, all over the place. What do you do? How do you adapt to that? It's just a speed, it's a reflex, okay? We want to train you to have some fast reflexes. If you see a change, comment on the change and then immediately implement whatever the change is as fast as you can, okay? Speed, yes. People talk about it in marketing and competition. It's important. Good. Second, number two. Now we're talking about competitive analysis, okay? Now I used to say, don't look at the competition, but I needed to clarify, I needed to clarify what that actually meant. When you look at competition and you compare yourself to the competition and you start getting introverted on it and you say, oh man, I don't feel so good. I'm not so good at this. They're not interested. Oh man, I'm not, I'm not this. I'm not, oh, I don't have a jet. I don't have a Ferrari. I don't have millions of dollars. I don't have blah, 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 blah. 
you might as well just close the door up and stop working, right? But let me tell you what you can do with the big boys that nobody talks about. Attacking. You have to look at the competition and you have to assess the strengths they have. This might sound a little counterintuitive, but you have to, ex what are they good at? Just acknowledge it. Look at that guy that's winning in the space and say, what are they really good at? Okay, they're good at this, 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 and this. Good. What is their position? Oh, their position is blah, de, blah, de, blah, de, blah, de, blah. Okay. What is my position? Oh, I now you look at it and say, what's my position in relation to them? Well, we kind of do the same thing. Okay. All right. Well, we actually do it better. Okay. All right. Good. And then um, what are we really strong at? Oh, okay. We're actually stronger than them in some of those areas. Now, second part of this, this is attacking. This is social media strategy right now. This is content creation, outwitting the competition, what you need to do. I don't care how big the person is. I don't care how many hundreds of millions of dollars of the company or the organization. I don't care. This works every single time. Okay. What is their weakness? Maybe the fact that they're big is a weakness. I don't know. Maybe you can't get in contact with the main guy that you want to get in contact with. I don't know. Maybe when you look at some of these guys and like, yeah, we'll do all your social media for you and you're templated and you're put over to a guy or a kid that's 20 years old and you realize this is not what I paid for. What is the weakness of that organization? Analyze that weakness. Analyze that position in the marketplace and you go create content on all of it. You don't have to acknowledge the competition. You don't have to say anything about it. You could just say some companies do blah. Some people do blah. And you attack on that line. Okay. You find one, two, three, one, two, three, or four different areas of that company. And you just you zero in on that and you, now this is a strategy. You don't have to attack all the time. This is a very aggressive play, but this will allow you to claim market share from other individuals. Okay. This will allow you to just start, come with me. Oh, you don't feel valued. Come with me. Oh, you had a bad experience. Come with me. Okay. What is that weakness and how much content can you create on it? Focus in on it and badger it, like beat it to death. Like do a whole week series of content just on one point and beat it to death. Beat it to death because why? Nobody else is going to do it. And guess what? You know, with the, with the way that, that social media platforms work, when you're posting on YouTube, the, the great index of planet Earth, YouTube, the greatest index of all time of video, you're going to start showing up. People are going to show up. Your friends are going to see it. Oh, yeah, man, you're right. Because you want affinity. You want to build affinity from people, Okay. When people are going through a tough time, they want to know that somebody's on their side, right? So you look at these market leaders, the gurus, the experts, you know, the guys that are claiming all these things, but they're not covering all the angles of it. They say one thing, but they're leaving out 75% of that road. That 75% allows you to claim more market share than they could ever dream of because they're only focused on this, but you could take everybody else just by attacking that point. Okay. When we look at companies, that's the first thing I do. I'm like, where are you in relation to your competition? Are you above, middle, below? What are they really good at? Good. What, what, where is the weakness? Where is it turnaround time? Is it, what is it? What is the problem? Okay. Where, and you look at Google reviews, like <clears throat> use all the information that's out there because you can use it. You want to use everything to your advantage, which is what we're talking about in social media today. Okay. Now you don't have to be a, you know, what a pain in the, you know, what a Royal a-hole or whatever. You don't have to do that to, to attack. All you have to do is simply lightly acknowledge it. And that's enough to start pulling market share away. Okay. Now that's attack. Next one flanking. Let's talk about flanking. Okay. Flanking, flanking, flanking. It's like, instead of going straight at it, we're going to kind of skirt the edge, come around the other side, surprise attack. Okay. Why would we want to flank in social media? Now, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you a story about flanking because this is exactly what I did. Flanking, okay? When I was, I was in a, I was in an interesting situation. Sorry, my mouth was somewhere else and my brain was over here and we were trying to connect the dots and it didn't happen. So just deal with it. Now we're moving on. I was in a situation where I couldn't quite do certain things the way that I wanted to do them. So I had to figure out a way to still promote and stay relevant in the marketplace, right? Staying position, identification, differentiation. 
So what I had to do was discover for myself, okay, I have a certain amount of knowledge. I have experience. I have data. I have information. I have things that I can share with other people. What, what can I do with it? So I didn't talk about products. I just talked about me. And I'm not saying that from a vanity standpoint. I'm saying it from the standpoint of I had the, I just wanted to communicate. All the while I'm building up this business, you know, I'm trying to get this thing built and ready to go. And I'm looking at it from the standpoint of other people in the marketplace that were already, you know, there. And I realized that one of the things that was missing was the ability to empathize, empathize the ability to understand and communicate that empathy, empathy and communication out into the marketplace. And so my job was to create content that would empathize where people were at, where, when they were at, whatever it was at the time. And so what flanking allowed me to do was I didn't have to go in on the direct attack and tell people to buy. All I had to do was be present and show myself and show my life and show what I was doing. And all of a sudden, you know, we went, I went from basically in my last, you know, 400 bucks to about 20 grand in like six days, just because I started to do this. Now let's look at it on a bigger scale. Let's say you've got a big company that's out there, or maybe you're an entrepreneur that's just starting out in real estate or something like that. And you know that there's already well-established individuals that are going in on this one line. All you have to do is start building a community outside of that arena. Yes, this group looks big. This group looks massive. This looks like there's hundreds of thousands of people in this group. But you know what? That's just there. Let that audience go there, okay? The only ones that actually created anything were the guys that did this maneuver of flanking on social media, where they just went off on their own, created what they wanted to create, said what they wanted to say within reason, and decided to help with that empathy, with the empathy. I can't, for whatever reason, empathy is just a word I can't say today. Empathy and communication. And they were able to just start pulling audience people over and over and over and over because they were willing to communicate. They were willing to get out there, right? So you want to go where nobody else is at. Because when you have a big company or an influencer or an entrepreneur, everybody's there, right? So you want to go like to the unfound land, like chart your own territory, because realistically, that's what these people did. You go chart your own territory. And if you follow the attack and you start doing a little bit of a flanking maneuver with your own content over here, people will start to take notice of that. Man, what's, uh, what's John doing? What's Robert doing? You know, what's David doing? You know, what's Eric doing? What's happening? What are, the, what are these guys doing? And why are they doing it? Like, what is this? What, what's going on on that front? And so you start pulling this attention over to you in a way that maybe hasn't happened before. And then what you do is you stay on this kind of persistent line. Like you just keep doing that. In 2008, okay, I had dropped out of college and I moved across the country to New Mexico from New York City. Random, right? Why New York? Why New Mexico? Well, in 2008, the state of New Mexico offered amazing tax incentives for every large filmmaking company uh, and st major studio to go out and film there. And so my uncle, who was in real estate at the time, was like, dude, you need to come out here. Like, just come out here, figure it out. So I'll tell you what my career has been. I have literally been flanking the cinematography and the filmmaking industry for the last 18 years. And I picked up advertising as a result and grew an even more lucrative business than I would have had if I just wanted the one piece of what I was looking for inside of filmmaking. So I built this whole identity and this brand just because I pursued, I went in the general area and then I looked in the area and I'm like, why are all these people following these people? And I analyzed the competition at the time. And I said, nobody's doing it like this. I'm just going to start building it this way. And so my journey began for the next 11 years to present time today where we're on this call and I'm sharing it with you every single week. Flanking is literally going where nobody else is, setting up shop, promoting like the biggest wildfire that you can, and then getting people to come in as an element of surprise. See, so when you launch the, this, this piece, when you, when you start to do this flanking tactic on social media and YouTube, like people need to turn around and be like, where did you come from? Like, that's the reaction you should get. And then people should be turning around and saying, how are you actually producing all of this content right now? Okay. If I can do that, I can circumvent everything else. Okay. It doesn't matter if that company has hundreds of millions of dollars. I can literally take the weakness that I found and I can use a flanking attack and go around on the outside of social media promoting my own universe, however way I want. Look, all you need is one person to say yes to you. 
Okay. If you have a $5,000 product, all you need is one person to say, yeah, I'll give you five grand. Help me do it. Help me in the marketplace. We implemented this flanking thing with one of our, with our insurance group. And whew, we, we got one person and we worked with this person. We built it, built it, built it. And it took off. It was incredible how it actually works. So I'm sharing that with you. All right. I hope this is helpful. If you guys like what I'm talking about, please tell, let me know in comments. Let me know what's going on there. Uh, the lat or chat. We're not live. This is chat. We're on Zoom. Okay, last one that I wanted to cover right now, I'm gonna take a sip of the Coke Zero, no product placement, is defending, okay? So one is attacking, one is flanking, one is defense, okay? So let's say you do this and you go through all of this and you become big. What do you need to do? Well, you gotta hold your position in the marketplace, right? So holding your position in the marketplace requires you to always continuously look for new ways to outflank other individuals, right? So if you've got your pulse on what's happening in the marketplace today, if you've got your pulse on what's happening, what people's viewpoint is, where they're coming from, what we, I mean, I'm doing probably 100 to 120 phone calls a day on top of all the marketing that I'm already doing. And I'm listening to all these conversations. And I'm literally like, we need a product for this. Nobody has a product for this. Nobody's talking about this. Nobody's distributing this the way that we're doing it. We need more of that, okay? I start creating products on this and then I promote the hell out of it right away. If you follow me, go look at my Instagram stories. Just look at it today. Just look at today and you'll see exactly what I mean. There's just dip, 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 dip. go, 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 go. Why? Because I got to a point where I'm like, okay, I need to start defending. I still attack. I still flank, but I also defend. So I do all three at the same time. Okay. I saw somebody who said, Hey, investing in your books, a big person, we're talking a big person who ironically spent a lot of money building a brand, uh, turn around and say, building a brand is not important after they spent hundreds of millions of dollars building a brand. And I was like, that's interesting. And that's confusing information. That's actually creating more of a problem. That's an opportunity for me. Like I want the big boys. I want companies, whoever, I want someone to drop a piece of contradictory or a piece of confusing information because I'm like, I can correct that. And if I can correct that, I know other people had the same thought that I had. And I know that I could turn that into a business opportunity for me. I know that I have that ability. I have the ability to turn that into a business opportunity and help somebody else today. So I hold my position in the marketplace by increasing the amount of products I have, increasing the amount of communication that I have out there in the marketplace, holding my position in the marketplace by continuously evolving the identity by continuously looking at what is this guy doing and I'm going to do it better than that. Okay. And look, God bless America. It's a free capitalist society. People are allowed to do what they want to do. No problem. However, from a marketing perspective, when we work with somebody, I need to know what they're doing. And then I need to know what you know. And then I need to communicate that for you. And you need to communicate that for you. Okay. The advertising campaigns, little caveat here. The advertising campaigns that I've seen that don't work are the guys that are just like, it will work for me on automatic. Where you see the guys that go out there and they say, yeah, we got this incredible ROI for all this money. And I'm like, okay, tell me about the two-year journey it took you to get there. Tell me about how many failures it took to actually get to that point, right? There's no unicorn in advertising. I'm trying to give you the unicorn with this information. And every week I will be giving you the unicorn of information because nobody gave it to me. And most people don't really go into what we're talking about. I mean, have you heard of anybody talk about what we're talking about tonight? Maybe a little bit, but hopefully there was enough of a spin on it where you realize, man, I don't defend my position. Even if you're just starting out, you need to be able to defend your position. Even if you're just beginning, you need to defend your position. There's just no reason why you should not be doing that. Why? because you're worth it. And that's where people, you know, you're the one, you're the reason why people are going to do business. That's it. Okay. So if you can implement speed, attacking, flanking, defending, mixed with identity and differentiation in the marketplace as a crucial step for social media, your position is, 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 is it's, it's quantifiable by more money, quantifiable by you knowing who you are and how to control that space. Okay. So what I want to do now, hopefully that was really helpful. That's, that's what I wanted to cover today, okay? We're going to go into a lot of tactical stuff. Um, what I want to do now is open it up to question and answer for you for the next 10 minutes or so. 
Uh, we do have a lot of products, okay? So if you want to learn how to be a little bit more creative, uh, we've got a product for you there. If you want to learn Photoshop to design your own stuff, we've got a product for you there. If you want to learn how to do video editing, we've got a product for you there. If you want me to help you, we've got products for you there. Uh, you could shoot me an email at info at cislowventures.com or you can go to cislowventures.com and just check out everything that we have at that, at, that, at that website. I don't know why that sounded so strange, but you could check out what we have at our website. Um, but I'll open it up to questions. If you guys want to put it in comments there, uh, you should be good. And then I'll just answer them as they come in. Let me just scroll up here. I think I saw Eric might have had a uh, come in. How do you recover pre-registration when the product gets delayed or canceled multiple times? Well, I mean, try not to have the product delayed or canceled mul multiple times, you know, like, like try not like you, if you say you're going to do something, you have to do it. Like there is just no excuse. Okay. I was trained and I come from the school of, if you say you're going to do it, you do it. Okay. If you say you're going to launch something, you launch something. Okay. No matter what you say it, you know, you can kind of give yourself a leeway like this week, this month, this year, but how do you recover people? Let's just look at that situation. If you lost people because your product was delayed multiple times, you now have to like work three times as hard to make up the damage. What you have there is a broken form of communication. Okay, you've broken communication and you've broken reality with that person, which automatically makes them not like you. So what do you have to do? Increase communication, increase communication, talk to these people more, send more updates, give them ideas, give them a behind the scenes view of what actually happened. Here's why the product was delayed. Let's look real, as real, transparent and authentic as you can make it is gonna be beneficial to you and start coaxing them back in. Be like, look, we're human, we mess. Like, be honest, we delayed it. We overpromised, and we underdelivered, and we know we did that. Can you give us a chance to make it right? Or survey them, how can I make this right? How can I make this right to you right now? You should do this in your relationships. You should do this with your friendships, okay? Somebody messes up, somebody does something, you say, dude, I messed up, what can I do to fix it? Like, how can I actually make it up to you? Right? You would apply that if your product gets delayed multiple times and you, and you want to recover pre-registration. Hey, how could we make it up? Just put yourself out there. You're not going to die. Who cares? And if people complain about it, good. You don't want them anyway. But you have to work three times as hard and make that effort. I don't know what that is. Could be content. Could be giving stuff away. Could be you know something free, some sort of treat. I don't know. Whatever it is. But you have to demonstrate that you're actually working towards making up the damage in a way that makes sense to them and acknowledging them. See, now let's, let's come back here for a second. Uh, the pulse of what's happening, okay? We talked about that earlier. If your customers or these people that have pre-registered are upset with you, call them up. And why are you upset? Oh, you said this. Good. Get to the root cause of it. Then all of your marketing and everything that you need to do needs to reflect that and you got to address it. And then you solve the problem. And that's the game. That's what we're playing. All right. All right. Let's see what other questions we have. Let's pop over here. Anonymous attendee. How important is personal branding? What is the first thing I can do? Okay. Personal branding is without a doubt the most important. It, it, I mean, nothing works without it. Okay. Um, I don't care how big this company is. I don't care how large you are. Um, personal branding is the reason why I would buy. Like 90% of our business 90% of my business is because I built a personal brand, okay? Uh, I don't have to. I could just run an advertising agency and just say, oh, we're the frog advertising agency out of San Francisco or Silicon Valley and have a, you know, one of those hipster looking websites out there. Uh, and that's it. You come to us and then I put you in a slot machine and um, you may never hear from me again or you're just kind of getting this generic thing. I chose... I, I mean, I don't have to do this. Like I don't have to be out there in front, but I, I want that communication line in. I, I want people to trust me. I want people to have an insight into this. I want the guys that showed up tonight to really see like how passionate I am about what I do, you know? And, and, and I want people to see the journey. I want people to see the thought processes that I have because that's what's making the difference, okay? The first thing you can do if you want to build a personal brand is watch this video again. And then number two, just take inventory, just take inventory of the knowledge that you have and start thinking about how could I communicate about one thing? Just pick one thing. 
spend a week on it, you know, write an article, uh, do a short social media post, take a picture of something, you know, uh, and, and just start to make the motion towards communication and promotion. Um, that's what we want to, that's what we want to do on that front. And hopefully that answers your question. That was a great question. All right. What else? Does anybody else have any other questions that they want to share on this? You just type it in the chat and I'll answer it for you. Nope, nobody. Okay, well, brilliant. Well, that's about an hour. So that's, what I, that's everything I wanted to talk to you about today. I'm going to have a replay of this that you'll have access to. Guys, I really just want to thank you for showing up. I really hope it was valuable. Um, we're going to have another one. We're going to do one every week. Every Wednesday at seven o'clock, we're going to do it. So I'll get this live. Go to cislowventures.com. We've got a lot of cool courses. If you click on the training uh, tab, there'll be a drop down and you can see all the stuff that we have there. If you have questions, you can email me info at cislowventures.com. Otherwise, thank you so much. I really do appreciate you giving me the time today. And uh, we'll talk to you all next week. And tell your friends about it and post on social media what you watched and say hashtag Cislo Spice because I'm going to give somebody a little gift. All right. Thank you so much, guys. Have a great night. We'll talk next week. Hey, guys. Thanks so much for watching the video today. Listen, I got a couple things I want to share with you. If you want help with promotion and marketing training on how to build a brand, transform your brand, you can go to cislowventures.com forward slash secrets revealed. It's a 200 course program online that gives you everything from starting with nothing all the way up to taking you to advertising. And whatever questions you might have, it's very simple, very short, very effective, gets you going. Number two, if you need any help with anything digital, video production, web design, graphic design, maybe you need printers, maybe you need flyers, maybe you need graphics, social media posting, Facebook ads, Google ads, YouTube ads, LinkedIn posting, Twitter posting, video production, consulting, training, any of those items, we can help you with that. You can just go to cislowventures.com, sign up there, go to the branding page, check out the webinar that I have, take a look at all that. And then lastly, if you're a high-end corporate client, one that's spending north of $60,000 a month in advertising spend, you can go to cislowspice.com and we have special corporate enterprise pricing for you just over there and everything digital, all right? So if you need anything, all the links are below. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.